the anointing of the Holy Spirit is what distinguishes the ministers of God from false prophets. Jesus said to his disciples, he said, dwell ye in the upper room until you are endued with power from on high. It was a short while, a few days back, that Peter denied Jesus. And when a little girl came and said, hey, you are one of them. And Peter said, I am not. I don't even know him. And so, but when he was imparted and the anointing of the Holy Spirit came upon him, the same Peter stood and spoke to the Pharisees and to the Roman authorities about their wicked deeds in crucifying Jesus. What made the difference? It is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. But I would like to have a question. What is actually the oil of the anointing? What makes the anointing flow? What makes the anointing work? Possibly I'll give you seven important segments of the oil of anointing. Number one is the call. The call of God is what makes the oil, I mean the anointing work. Please get this. Anointing simply means enablement. Anointing simply means ability to perform. Anointing simply means grace to work and bring forth results. That's the layman's language of anointing. So the call of God is without repentance. Each and every one of us that is created into this world has been anointed to do something. Everyone, whether you are a believer in Christ or you are an unbeliever, the anointing has been released upon you. The enablement has been released upon you. All right, let me give you this. The eye has been anointed to see. That's the duty of the eye. The legs are anointed to work. The hands are anointed to perform something. So there is the anointing. And the call of God, the Bible says, is without repent repentance. So when you are called of God, the first thing you need to do is to understand the core of the call, the essence of the call, the value of the call. Once you, need, you, you know it, you need the second segment of the oil now. Number two is cleansing. Any man that has the call of God, for you to function within the abilities designed by God, there must be a cleansing. This is where salvation is needed. This is where you need to be born again. This is where you need to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Now, know this, please, if you will. We, we do have so many false concepts about God. A few days back, I was in Dominican Republic, and in one of the resorts, I met a man who is a Gnosticist. And he was telling me he doesn't believe in God, but he is a Gnosticist. I said, that's fine, but I've already known that there are so many false concepts about the person of God. Let me just give you some. We have the agnostics. The agnostics are those who did not that the possibility of knowing who God is is not there. Two, we have the atheists. The atheists are those who believe that ancestral uh, parents, ancestral uh, spirits are gods. Three, we have the reprobates. The reprobates are those who decided to deny the existence of God. Four, we have the atheists. The atheists are those who say there is no God blatantly. <laughs> but by the way, just a few days ago, we, we met with somebody who said he's an atheist, and then something happens, oh my God, he said, it's a mistake. That's what the guy said. So indirectly, in deep within him, the consciousness of the reality and the person of God is there. Then we have what we call the egotists. The egotists, bread beloved, are those who say that myself, I am God. They tell you that they are the God you are looking for. That's the egotist. And then we have the universalists. The universalists are those who say any religion can serve, any God can serve. 
You can go to God, they say, through, through Muhammad, you can go through Buddha, you can go through Baha'i, you can go through different kinds of faith. And then we have another false concept about God. And this other false concept is what we call pantheists. The pantheists are those who say nature is God. Nature is God. So we have about seven or more false concepts of God. So there is a need for cleansing. Remember, Brother Isaiah was a prophet. He preached in chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6. Actually, between chapter 1 and chapter 6 is a period of about seven years. Isaiah was a prophet for seven years and yet he has never met the Lord. And then until that day when he saw the Lord, the, the year that King Uzziah died, he saw the Lord. When he saw the Lord, he now saw that he was a man that is unworthy. He discovered his calling, but there was no cleansing. And when he saw that he was unworthy, he said, oh, a man of unclean lips. That's what he said. And then God now came and sent an angel to touch his lips with a coal of fire. He was cleansed. And after that, he had the call. He said, who shall go for us? And whom will I send? And he said, here am I, Lord, send me. That's where we get this song. Here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. He answered the call and said, Lord, you can now send me. I am ready, having been cleansed, to carry out the call. And then the third aspect, the oil of the anointing came. That's the commissioning. It was then the Lord said, go and do this work. When God commissions a man, that man gets a complete clue to the vision that God has for him. He gets a complete clue to exactly what he is called to do. We have so many preachers today in the kingdom, and some say, I am called to preach the Bible. The Bible is like a country. In the country, you have many cities. In those cities, you have so many villages. So it's just like a continent, by the way, or it's just like the world. And in the world, we have so many continents, we have so many countries. So the Bible, there are some that specifically, they are called with a mandate to heal. They are called with a mandate to teach and preach the holiness of God. They are called with a mandate to speak life with regard to prosperity. But in all, the most important thing, it begins with the call, the cleansing, and the commissioning. This three makes the oil flow. But by the way, obedience to the call, to the cleansing grace, and the commissioning power of God is what makes the oil flow. I believe that you are blessed of God. Do your best to subscribe and follow me all the way through leadership teaching. And you will enjoy the manifold blessings of God. I will see and I love to see you on top. You are blessed of him. In Jesus' precious name.